right, guys, welcome back to the Knives Fast channel. We love being here with you guys. Enjoy the conversations and the fun. So, guys, if you're new around these parts, uh, definitely subscribe, hit that notification bell, stick around, and all of you like and comment, and let's have some fun. Check me out on Instagram, and check out a live stream Monday nights, 7.45 Eastern is KF Live. All right, this is a knife from sent to me from our knives our knives, our friends at Kubi Knives. Uh, this is the James Lowe uh, designed KB294A, the Interflow. All right, let's get into this guy. Uh, really enjoying it. This is probably, uh, no, it is. It's probably, let's just say, it is the most premium Kubi I've seen. Um, I believe so, as far as materials. Um, and it's probably uh, one of my favorites. And I've told you guys, Kubi has continued. You know I work with Kubi uh, on, on my knives, and this is the upcoming uh, Microjet from Tempest Knives. And uh, they, they literally are not afraid to try things like this um, and just are killing it. And we're struggling with focus here. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, but yeah, they are killing it. You know that on the OEM side, but now you have seen uh, the Kubi knives out there just continue to get better and better and better. And this is the Interflow. And again, we have Frag Titanium. I love the way they do their frag. Uh, you guys can see the way the frag is milled. It is milled in such a way that it is not um, not sharp in any way. It, it gives great grip. It feels good, but it's smooth enough, uh, that you can just sit there and do that all day, like a worry stone or something. And it is great. You do have blue accents, uh, which I love. You have blue anodized titanium clip backspacer. Uh, you have a blue thumb studs. You have blue pivot. Gotta love it. We have flat scales, but we are chamfered on the edges of that. Uh, it is a flipper tab with really nice uh, grabby jimping, I'll call it. Good thumb studs. Uh, just really well made. Now, your uh, clip is a uh, titanium mill clip. You have about that much sticking out. Not too bad. And it is not reversible. You do have a hidden lanyard pin for those of you that love the lanyard. And uh, let's just get this guy open and let you see. Now, if you haven't seen this knife, be ready for this blade. Bam! We have a compound ground uh, belt satin. I mean, come on. Uh, thin hollow grind, like not real deep, but, but really good. Uh, you have beautiful uh, horizontal satin on the flats, beautiful vertical satin there, and diagonal on uh, that flat ground tip that gives you a more robust tip and you do have a nice swedge up here uh, you do have some jimping and a thumb ramp which is great now let's go ahead and jump into that and so you have a good size four finger grip and my natural landing spot on that is right on that thumb ramp you gotta love it uh, you don't really want to be up here simply because well you can right to there but as you get further up the swedge is a little uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable, I guess you would say. You have a very, very nice done plunge grind that gives you a great sharpening choil that works well. Um, and we have great access to the lock bar. Now, they did sort of milling on um, the chamfer there, which I think is great. Uh, that is never going to irritate you. You have a good chamfer. You have good pass-through access to that. And it is great. Now, the detent on mine, I saw Kevin left to EDCs. He was saying his detent on the thumb studs um, is really strong, which mine is very strong. Uh, but he says his detent on the uh, flipper tab was light. I will say maybe mine's a little stronger because my, th my detent on the thumb studs, for some of you, may well be too strong. For me, it is absolutely great. Uh, on the flipper tab, it is dialed. It is absolutely perfect. Now, you can see this guy is a control dropper. It does come to your thumb there on the flipper tab, and then we are control dropping right in there. We are dead centered. Yes, sir, dead centered. Uh, and then lockup wise no lock rock, no blade play. Uh, we got like uh, 40 to 45 on the lockup there. 
All right, let's do the focus thing. All right, I got to move this stuff, guys. I'm sorry. All right, there we go. Uh, so you can see there, very well done. Again, you have a nice chamfer here as well. Uh, there is your lock bar. Um, this is the only maybe negative thing. These are these could be finished off just a little bit better. I could see we're over time, maybe taking it in and out of your pocket because you got to remember for a righty, it sits in a pocket like this, um, and you're going to be pulling it out on the corner. This is where the seam of your pocket is, so it's going to go bloop bloop. Um, so, but it does sit on a good spot there. Uh, no problems with that. Um, but that is my only little nitpick, I guess you would say. But again, very good in the hand, very controlled. Does give me some Chavez uh, vibes, or um, there's others maybe. But, you know, come on, let's let's be serious here. When you start doing a compound ground and a tanto, it's going to look like uh, several uh, things like that. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, definitely not copied in any way. And James Lowe uh, really seems to know what he's doing with designs. Also seems like a really nice guy, but um, really like it. Um, really cool knife. All right, let's see about uh, some cutting here. We'll talk about uh, comparisons and specs uh, and all that. Now, that hollow grind definitely, oh, I got in the sharpening choil. I hate when I do that. Makes the knife look bad, but it's definitely me. Uh, now, well, we're grabbing a little bit right there. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I don't know. That's me. Uh, again, a little more of a blunt tip uh, on the Tanto, but it's kind of rounded, um, and so you can pierce a little bit, but again, uh, your tip is very high. Your secondary tip now, you can get down in there and definitely do a nice cut with that secondary tip if you would like. But it definitely cuts. That was me screwing up as usual. Wait, don't do that. Let's do our comparisons. Your Ontario Rat 1 is going to be tiny bit bigger, but not by much. Your Ontario Rat 2 is going to be quite a bit smaller. Okay. And then we're going to do a few more Kubi comparisons here. First of all, uh, we will get, well, if I can find it, here we go. No, what I do? Oh, there it is. Okay. We will get both of kind of what I think is Kubi's flagship model at this point, the, the, uh, Tidious, and there is the titanium version and the G10 version. You can see size-wise, it this is not as tall um, as the the Tidious, uh, but it is about the same length. There you go. We'll get those out of there, and then just because it's still here and I haven't given it away yet, we're trying to get to 20k and give some of these knives away. But um, this is uh, the Veragero from Kubi, which is also an incredible model from them. Uh, and you can see same length and maybe even same height. Very similar, obviously more of a drop point here than a Tanto. Uh, but yeah, very cool uh, comparisons indeed. So I love this knife. I think James did a great job designing it. Now, the good news is at the time of the recording, there are three versions of this available at kubishopping.com. Okay, there is a blue anodized version. Uh, with blue hardware, 176. But if you use code KCLT, excuse me, KC06LT, KC06LT, that will get you 6% off, which brings us down to 164, I believe. Uh, there is a silver version, which is this one. And then you have a tux version with the black, uh, which is really cool. All three are available as we speak. Now, if we go in and look... At specs, this guy is uh, titanium, of course, and I didn't even talk about the steel. I'm sorry, guys. It is M390. Uh, by the way, you got James Lowe's logo there. You got Kubi there. Do we even have? Yep, the steel is right there, M390. Uh, 8.11 inches overall with a 3.5-inch blade and a 4.61-inch handle. Uh, the handle thickness is 0.51. Uh, the blade thickness is 0.15 so thicker stock but with a hollow grind i'm not super worried again sometimes to get a good hollow grind you gotta go thicker on that stock belt satin on the finish of the blade um cage ceramic bearings uh tip up only uh, uh tip up only and right hand only and 4.7 ounces which isn't bad for it being a little bit of a chunkier knife so there we go that is the kubi 
Interflow. And again, by the way, I forgot to mention, a lot of times I kind of gripe about the flipper tab, but I have plenty of room to relax my hands here in this grip. And that guard of the flipper tab is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do for me, uh, which is great. So guys, what do you think of the Interflow? What do you think uh, of what Kubi is doing? Uh, I think they're killing it. But uh, like comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and thanks guys for watching the Knives Fast channel.